Hey! Now that signals are available in Angular version 16, let's walk through how to use them in a more real-world application. This video is a live coding demo. If you are new to Angular signals, check out my introductory signals video that covers the what, why, and how. You can find the link to that video in the upper right corner now, or in this video's notes. Before we jump into the code, let's take a quick look at what we're building. Here is a list of user information for all of our team members. Click on an entry, and we see the list of tasks for that user. This task data is coming from a live public endpoint and displays the tasks in Latin. Notice also that the selected user is highlighted on the left to show which user is selected. The list on the right displays each task and their status. Click the Complete button on the right to mark a task as complete. Notice that the title of this component reacts to the change and keeps count of the number of completed tasks. With that, let's write some code. To save some time, I've built the structure of the application along with the templates. That way you don't have to watch me type HTML. We'll add the code for our components and services. If you'd like to code along with me, you can find the shell of this application at the URL listed below. Let's start with the user list component. Here at the top of the class, I've already injected the user service using the inject function, which was new in Angular version 14. Instead of injecting the service dependency as part of the constructor, we can inject it with the inject function. This is a bit easier, looks a bit nicer, and is a bit more explicit making it more obvious that we are injecting a dependency. We have the page title, which doesn't change, so we don't need a signal for that. We do want to manage a set of users, so let's create a signal. We declare a user's variable and call the signal creation function, passing in a default of an empty array. And we need to import signal. Hovering over, we see that the signal is not of the correct type. So let's use the generic parameter to specify a user array. And we need to import user as well. Next, we want to track the selected user. Let's just track the selected user's ID. We declare a variable and call the signal constructor, specifying a default value of zero. Here we assume zero is no user selected. Lastly, we want to create a function that is executed when a user is selected. We'll call it onSelected and pass in the user ID. In the function, we'll set the selected user ID signal to the selected user's ID. We call this function from the template using the click event handler. Speaking of template, let's take a quick look at the user list component template. At the top, we bind to the page title. Here in the ng-if, we read the user's signal and check its length. We don't display the list of users if we don't yet have any users in the list. The ng-4 loops through the users in the user signal. And here we use ng-class. We change to active for the button with the user ID that matches the selected user ID signal. Let's run it. And we have no users. That was expected because we're currently setting the signal to an empty array. We need to issue an HTTP GET request to get the user data. Let's do that now. In the user service, we inject the HTTP client service and define the URL. Notice that this is a public and free data endpoint. We'll declare a variable users dollar and set it equal to this.http.get. We want the returned response in the shape of a user array, so that's our generic parameter, and we pass in the URL. We could add error handling here as desired, but instead of an observable, we really want to work with signals, so let's create a user signal and use toSignal to create a signal from the user's dollar observable. Notice when I hover over users, it displays signal of user array or undefined. Where did that come from? Every signal needs to always have a value. When issuing an HTTP request, we don't immediately have the data, so we need a default value. 
By default, the default value is undefined, but we don't want to have to worry about handling undefined in the template. So let's add our own default value by setting the second argument of toSignal. We'll pass in an object and set the initial value property to an empty array of type user array. Checking the data type, we now have a signal of user array. Since we're working with signals, we can add private to our observable. Any component needing our user data will instead access the signal. We really want to share the selected user ID signal we created in the component, so we'll move it here. And we'll create a method to set the signal here as well. Set selected user, pass in the user's ID, and then set that ID into the selected user ID signal. Notice that if we hover over users, we see that it is a signal. If we hover over selected user ID, we see that it is a writable signal. Signals we create from an observable are read only. That could be a problem if you want to update any of the retrieved data. We'll look at this issue a bit further later in this video. For now, back in the component, we'll change this user signal to instead reference the service. Same with the selected user ID signal, we'll instead reference the service. And we'll change the method to delegate responsibility to the service, calling its set selected user method. Let's bring up the browser, and we see the list of users. Also notice that when we click on a user, the style changes to identify the selected user. But we don't yet see the list of tasks. Let's work on that next. We'll open the to-do service that manages the list of tasks for a user. At the top, we inject the HTTP client service and the user service, since we'll want to access the selected user ID signal. We'll react to changes to that signal and get the tasks for the selected user. Here we have the URL. Notice that it requires a parameter defining the user ID of that selected user. To get the tasks, we'll declare a variable, UserTasks$, and issue an HTTP GET request. We want the data in the shape of a to-do array, so that's our generic parameter. And we pass in the URL plus the user ID parameter. But wait, how do we get this user ID? We can read it from the signal. Let's comment out this HTTP request for a moment. We want to react when the selected user ID signal changes and then issue an HTTP request to get the tasks for that user. To do that, we use to observable to create an observable from the user service selected user ID signal. When the signal changes, this observable emits a value that we can react to in an observable pipeline. Inside that pipeline, we'll use switch map so we can switch to the selected user's tasks. If you aren't familiar with switch map, check out my video on switch map, merge map, and concat map linked in the upper right corner and in this video's notes. The two observable emits the user ID. Then we can cut and paste this HTTP request. We now have the user ID we need for our URL parameter. We want the result as a signal, so we'll declare a user tasks variable and use toSignal to create a signal from the resulting HTTP response. We again want our own default value, so we'll use the initial value property like we did earlier. And we can mark our observable as private so any component uses the signal. Lastly, we want a mark complete method. This method takes in a task and marks it as complete. You may have noticed that we aren't using the signal here. We'll talk more about that in a moment. Now let's look at the user to do's component. Here we inject the to-do service and set the page title. We'll create a user tasks signal that references the signal from the service. Note that we could have our template access the signal directly from the service, but my personal preference is to have the template talk only to the component, so we reference the signal from the service here. 
We also want a mark complete method that takes in a task. It calls the mark complete from the service. Lastly, we'll look at the template. I'd commented it out so that we could run without a bunch of syntax errors. I'll uncomment it now. In the ng-if, we read the user tasks signal and check its length. We don't want to display a list of tasks if the user doesn't have any. In the ng4, we read the signal and loop through all of the user tasks, displaying the task title and completed status. And if the task isn't completed, we display a mark as complete button. This button click event calls our mark complete method, passing in the task. Looking at the browser, we again see the list of users. Select a user, and we see the list of tasks. Nice! When we click on the Mark as Complete button, the task is marked as complete, and the button no longer appears. But note that we don't currently have any code to save our changes. So if we pick a different user and come back, our changes aren't saved. We could add code to our Mark Complete method in our service to issue an HTTP request to perform an update. But this endpoint we are using is public and not updatable. There is one missing feature yet to implement. We aren't displaying the total number of completed items in the title. Let's do that next. Looking at the user to do's component, let's change the hard-coded page title to a title that displays the number of completed tasks. We'll comment out the hard-coded assignment. First, we create a completed count computed signal. We use the computed creation function and add the associated import. We read the array from the user task signal and filter it to only those items with completed set to true. Then we call dot length to count the number of completed items. Next, we'll create a page title computed signal. Here we'll use the computed creation function to build the title string. We use the backtick to create an interpolated string. We'll specify user tasks dash and use the dollar sign and curly brace to read the completed count signal. We then add completed to finish the title. Do you think this is going to work? Spoiler alert, it won't, but let's give it a try. We have the list of users pick a user and see their list of tasks. But what is this gobbledygook here at the top? That's what we see if we display a signal instead of reading the signal. Going back to our code, let's open the template. Here, instead of binding to a normal variable, we need to read the signal. Let's try it again. We have the list of users. Pick a user to see their tasks and we see the number of completed tasks. Clicking on the button marks the task as completed. Oh, it does not change our title. Our page title is not notified of the change, so it doesn't display the updated number of completed items. Any idea why? Let's look back at the to-do service. In the mark complete method, we are modifying the property directly, not using the signal so any code that depends on the signal won't receive notification of the change. Let's delete that. We instead use the signal and call its mutate method. The mutate method allows us to modify the content of a signal and provides notification that the signal has changed. But notice that we are getting a syntax error here. Property mutate does not exist on type signal. That's because a signal created from an observable is read-only. It's not a writable signal. If you're like me, you can think of numerous use cases where you are getting data from an HTTP request and want to update it. So until there are signal features to support this scenario, what can we do? One option is to create a writable signal. We'll call it user tasks. Call the signal creation function then import signal. We'll initialize it to an empty array, set the appropriate generic parameter, and we'll rename this other signal here to read only user tasks. Next, we pipe our HTTP response through a tap operator, import tap, and set our signal. We get the set of tasks, 
and we use this dot user tasks dot set to set that set of tasks into the signal. Now the code in our mark complete method no longer has a syntax error. So we create a writable signal. When we retrieve the data, we set that writable signal to the return set of tasks. We leave our to signal here because to signal will automatically subscribe and unsubscribe for us. Going back to the browser, we pick a user. We see their set of tasks. And now when we mark a task as complete, our completed count in our header works as expected. Success! Looking back at the code, we have a user service that exposes a read-only user signal and a writable selected user ID signal. And we have a to-do service that exposes a writable user tasks signal. We can use that signal to work with the user's tasks. We react to changes in the selected user ID signal, issue an HTTP request with a parameter, and set the appropriate tasks in our signal. If you have any questions or would like to see a video on another signal topic, please post those questions or suggestions in the comments. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe.